guys, welcome back to Michael Claire to Arts. So this morning we're going to be doing um, another product review slash uh, drawing session. <laughs> um, this is a little bit different. So a while back um, I decided to uh, take the plunge and buy a 3D printer. And uh, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you know that I dabble uh, a little bit here and there uh, in my uh, private uh, in my private illustration career um, in 3d sculpting in my professional career I 3d sculpt all the time so I don't the, the reason why is because you know 3d sculpting takes a long time and to do tutorials on it a lot of times you don't get not tutorials and to do videos on it you don't really get the understanding of what's really going on the language is different and even though I've been doing 3d sculpting a while I don't feel like I'm at the level really to teach somebody uh, how to 3D sculpt. But that being said, um, you know, my skill set is enough to where I can create and do toys and, and, uh, and, and stuff like that. But on the teaching level, a lot of that, again, you know, I'm still finding my way in that 3D sculpting world uh, a little bit more um, effectively. You know, a lot of the people that are out there that are doing it every single day and I don't do it every day because I do a lot of traditional art I do a lot of digital illustration whereas the 3d sculpting area definitely um, you know can be a challenge especially if you're coming from a 2d world or a digital illustration world the language is different the understanding is different and the programs utilized in creating 3d models are complex and uh, a lot of times uh, convoluted and, and hard to use so me teaching and doing a tutorial and to do a video on it to me is a lot of, is a little bit counterproductive because you know a lot of people that visit my channel aren't really interested in 3D and um, you know because the learning curve is so high. What we're going to do this morning is we're going to do a simple uh, unboxing and you know what I think is um, going to be a focus of this channel is coming at this from a person who's never really owned a 3d printer before so we're going to unbox it we're going to look at it we're going to see how hard it is to put it together because you know i think a lot of times you know these companies that put these printers and stuff and in, in, in boxes they think that their users are going to be super hyper um capable whenever it comes to putting stuff together and i'm just going to see how hard it is to put this thing together now just from experience because you know whenever I taught at the college they did have a 3d printer there so I, I do have quite extensive knowledge and understanding of, of the process of translating from the program to the to the uh, you know to the files necessary to get them over to the 3d printer you know setting up a slicer understanding what a slicer is and um, you know putting the lattice work on the model so it can be printed effectively and there's again it's that design language it's that not design language it's that uh, it's that language that a lot of people use uh, that are in the business 3d business that you know they assume the users understand what that is so we're gonna get into this a little bit today hopefully it won't be too convoluted and long and uh, we can get at least one print uh, out today of an existing model that I've done in the past so um, let's go ahead and get to the unboxing okay as you see the box is quite large and you know, doing it on a table wasn't really going to work. Doing it on my drawing desk wasn't really going to work. But, um, you know, sticking it on the floor obviously is the best option. It seems like this would obviously be the top because, you know, the way the printing is. So we're going to go ahead and get this up here a little bit. Make sure that I don't cut myself on my pocket knife. I ordered this a while back, um, pretty much the same time that I had ordered my Mac Mini, and it's been sitting underneath my desk because I've had so many issues with my Mac Mini. Um, and I've just let this kind of sit by the wayside, you know, waiting for the right time. So the box is very well done, obviously designed to protect the unit. So let's put this aside so I don't slice myself, which, by the way, I almost just did. Wow. 
really nice foam material. Not that that matters. I'm a package guy. Wow. <clears throat> Reminds me a lot of sound equipment, whenever you receive high-end sound equipment. So it's made by, um, it says Creality, Ender. Ender, I believe, is the model. So we have <clears throat> Creality is the manufacturer. Ender is the uh, model um, skew. And then the number five, I believe, is the model series. Wow, color instructions. Holy moly. You know, this particular printer, I believe, is about 320 bucks. So the instructions are in color. You never see stuff like this. Color, wow. Color instructions. Somebody's making a profit. Very well done. Very clear. It looks like... Let me see here. It says, do not use the printer in any other way described herein, or your warranty will be void. So it looks like it's got a lot of indications where it's going to give you a guide, kind of like a, uh, huh, oh my gosh, a syllabus, uh, you know, to, to show you where everything is once you get it assembled. So yeah, it's basically from the baseline up, you're assembling it from nothing. It's got all the parts. Wow. So that'll be interesting. <clears throat> I'll do that on time lapse so you guys won't go to sleep on me. After sales service card. So it looks like a year limited warranty from the date of product purchase. Three months limited parts warranty for vulnerable parts such as the nozzle, the module, the flat belt, and the glass platform. No warranty for the product gift. Storage card, card reader, wrench, pliers, scrap. Okay, so they give you a storage card, an SD card. Uh, a card reader, while well, they give you a card reader and uh, obviously the stuff to put it together in case you're remote, which is also uh, a benefit because in case you order this and you're at a place where you don't have tools, it's always nice that they include the tools. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start getting in here and getting dirty. Wow. Looks like all anodized aluminum. This right here Looks like it's the feeder. So this would feed the filament. It's got an adjuster right here. And I'm sure we'll get into that. <clears throat> this right here, as I pull this out, that looks like it's the logic board with the LCD screen and readout. And it's in a static bag got the little logo on here so we'll get into all that as I progress through and put it together hopefully it won't take too long and even though that I'll put it on a time-lapse um, I will be talking over the time-lapse and at the end I'll have a number of how long it takes um, me to put it together now kind of give you a, an overview of my experience with putting stuff together um, I have a very high degree of putting stuff together <laughs> I don't own a degree. I didn't earn a degree. It's just through the duration of my life. I've restored many cars. I've, I've done a lot of things mechanically speaking. So I have a very good understanding of how um, things go to, you know, go together. But I'm not going to come at this from a, how do we put it, a, um, an experience level person. I'll be looking at it in terms of a layman, you know, looking at both sides, somebody that doesn't have a lot of knowledge of how to put stuff together. It's like a lot of people don't understand, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey and certain Allen heads and, he and hex heads and different types of screws and different, you know, anodization and, and aluminum processes. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. So I'm going to be coming at this from a person who really doesn't know what they're doing. So hopefully that'll help those and give you an average because, you know, nothing frustrates me more than whenever I get into a review and they start talking about things I have no clue about, right? Um, you know, the language uh, that they put out there a lot of times is very confusing. And with the, today's 3D printers, a lot of them aren't going to, to the, to the uh, seasoned professional. A lot of those people will work at a studio 
and maybe you know they'll get the printer in and it's very easy to, for them to put it together a lot of these printers are going to schools to teachers to students and people that have no clue of how to use them and no clue of how to set them up properly now there's great instructions but again i want to kind of alleviate a lot of that questioning you know with this particular video coming at it from somebody that even though i know what i'm doing i'm going to present it like i really don't know what i'm doing so if i sound kind of weird sometimes that's why so let's get you on the um, time lapse uh unboxing and assembling of the creality it's an interesting word creality creality uh, ender 5 so enjoy the process Okay, as you see, I'm sitting here on the floor of my studio and I'm just going in and separating all of the materials from their packaging, laying things out in an orderly fashion, and just getting a feel for exactly what's going on. Putting the support pillars on right now, it uses um, a hex key, which is like a hexagon, uh, key to uh, place stainless steel screws into um, you know into the aluminum and then going in and I'm being very ginger and I even mentioned this uh, whenever I was talking about doing things um, you know it's it is a very robust piece of equipment but it does have a few parts on it that are delicate you know the micro switches you got to be very careful of the micro switches because if you just hit one of them, then the unit won't work properly. You know, those help let the computer program know where, um, where that extruder is, where the base is, where everything is. And, and if one of those micro switches gets damaged, then it's not going to work properly. And it will be frustrating, trust me. It weighs probably about 15 to 20 pounds um, overall. But the fit and finish and the quality is wonderful it's it's hard for me to say anything negative about this in terms of construction you know everything was color coded you see that i'm going in and i'm putting in the spool right here the only hang up i had with that were the little interlocking connectors that go in the channels um, but overall you know everything was very clear you see i've got my uh, guide right there on my leg and i'm just putting everything's color coded and generally speaking yeah that's pretty much the last of the cables and yeah, it's it's it was easy, very impressive. The tools were very helpful. Overall, now I'm I'm securing the cables uh, to the support structure, and there it is. And here it is, all assembled. The Creality Ender Five. All in all, gosh, it took me about forty minutes total to assemble the whole thing from start to finish. I didn't have any issues. Um, just followed the directions really closely and referenced um, the instructional uh, illustrations they have. They're really good. The only thing that I kind of had to hang up on were these little doodads right here because they have specific kind of um, locking mechanism. So if you look, once you place them into the channel, they have to turn. You can't have them horizontal. They have to be vertical for them to lock in. And that would be right here and right here and right here. So you're going to have to place that locking mechanism in here and then it needs to turn horizontal for it to lock in whenever it's on a vertical channel and on a horizontal channel, which is what this is, it has to go vertical. So it is a little challenging and they don't really turn on their own inside the channel. And also these smaller stainless steel hex bolts, they don't, um, they're not very durable. And, you know, as you see, it's a little bent here. I didn't really torque it in too much and the tool kind of bent. And then if you look, let's see if that's the one. Yeah, it is. That one actually has a little burr on the end where the plating started coming off and it was harder to turn. Also, um, cable routing. That is something that they also don't tell you um, how to manage. I guess you do it how you need to. I know this particular mechanism goes up and down, 
because here's the print head right here and the print head goes back and forth. So <clears throat> there is, you know, there does need to be some slack here. Obviously they've already worked that out for you. And then placement of the hose wasn't really clear either. And then you're left with this, which ultimately gets fed through the bottom. There's a hole on the bottom, if you can see that right there. And that's where the filament gets put in. And then what ultimately happens is this little mechanism, little motor here with a servo, it feeds the filament into the print head. And that's where the print, um, you see their fans on that because that gets really hot. So what I'm gonna do as it focuses, focus man, um, is I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. I'm gonna pull up a model on my, um, I'm gonna download, I'm gonna go to the Creality website to see if they have a slicer available. Um, some places do, some places don't. It just depends on the manufacturer. Um, I think I think Creality does, and hopefully it's for the Mac. Um, we'll see how that works. But either way, and also what's really cool is they included this little guy right here. A little SD card. My camera's messing up on me here. A little SD card reader. Pretty cool, huh? And as you see on the front of the unit, you see where, no, I did see, oh, right there. So you have what looks like a standard USB. Um, I don't know what that is. USB-C maybe? No, that's just looks like a power. And then of course you have that right there. I think this is where that plugs in, bloop. And then you have a standard SD card slot right there. There's the power button and the interface. I looked very briefly in the manual about the interface and it looks like a lot of it is PC based, which is fine because I do own multiple PCs. Um, and it looks like they've also, uh, loading filament, preheating method. So they go through the prompts uh, in the interface right here to help you get things done. Now there is a leveling process that we'll go through. Replacing the filament, cutting the filament, they tell, show you how to do things, how not to do things, where you place your model, where you don't place your model. So that's convenient. What's really cool though, this is magnetic, so it peels off and then you just, you bend it and your model pops off. So that's really cool. So, man, I'm excited to get started. So let's go ahead and plug her in and man what's up with the blurriness and get her started and as a side note just so you uh know from my point of view you know being a product designer somebody that reviews products somebody that has bought a lot of electronics i'm, I'm sure similar to you have this particular um printer everything's made of aluminum it seems we we have you know even where they could have cut corners it doesn't look like they cut any corners on the product. We're talking anodized aluminum, um, aircraft quality, you know, T6 uh, aluminum. And then you're looking at stainless steel fasteners, which is fantastic. And um, even the knob is made of metal. So everything's textured. One of the things that I did want to note to you guys when you're putting this printer together, if you buy this printer, there are micro switches uh, pretty much all over it. And when you're putting it together, the tendency to over torque, the tendency to overdo is something we as human beings tend to have. So take your time, gingerly put things in place, watch for the micro switches because if your hand slips and you hit that micro switch, the device will not work properly. So I'm gonna give you an example of a micro switch. So here's a really good example of two micro switches. You see this particular screw right here, I had to put in by hand and while I was wrenching it, it came across and if I had slipped at all, I would have hit this micro switch right here. You can hear it click and it's made of stainless, but this is all plastic with a silicone uh, little motherboard right there. And, and that little switch there as well. You know, everything is, you know, the silicone, or the silicone, but the um, silicone, I'm such an idiot. The, um, the material that the motherboard or the little motherboards, micro switches are attached to, is flexible, but it will break if you hit it too hard. And there are multiple micro switches um, on this particular device. I mean, there's one right here. 
you just literally, you know, it comes back and it'll, it'll hit it. So you gotta be, look how small it is. So be very, 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 very careful when assembling this particular unit. Okay, so that was the basic setup for the Creality Ender 5. Um, you know, I didn't go into all the super high details because I think that whenever a purchaser of one of these products um, gets into the minutia, it's part of the learning curve. And even though this video is representational to help, help you kind of alleviate some of that anxiety, I think that the only way that you're gonna learn how to use a product like this ultimately is to watch a tutorial like this and then to emulate and do it yourself. And you know, that's again, part of that moniker of being a maker, um, doing it yourself, you know, trying things and failing. And even though Creality does an incredible job of having instructions, um, you know, there is a possibility that even if you follow the instructions, something might not go the way that you want it to. But that being said, I think that this particular product is fantastic. I'm actually printing, um, you know, printing something here in the background. And as you see, the printer is less than two feet, about, about two feet away from me. And I still have the ability to talk. I mean, the decibel level is not loud at all. And, you know, we're going to turn the camera around here in just a second to help you see you know what I'm printing. I'm printing one of my old files that uh, I've been meaning to print and uh, it's going to be just a simple uh, human skull for reference. Um, it's not really that big either. It's going to take about two and a half hours to print. I didn't do it on the super high quality setting. I did it on the normal. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you the speed at which it's printing and then ultimately the final, um, you know, the final uh, print. In comparison to the model, I'll show you the model uh, in ZBrush. I use ZBrush for my um, for my uh, sculpting, and uh, again, you know, this product is great so far. I don't have any complaints with it. It's really quiet. Um, <clears throat> I did a very, very, very long print as a test uh, to begin with, and it turned out great. I can't really show that because it's a proprietary uh, character. Um, but, uh, just you know, suffice it to say it turned out fantastic, but, um, I am going to compare and contrast. I'll show you the model of the, of the skull here in just a moment, and then I will, um, show you the end print. So was it hard to do? Um, no, not really. It, the thing is though, if you don't have a lot of knowledge and understanding of how computers work and how mechanics work, it might be a challenge for you. That's why they have instructions. Follow the instructions and you'll be fine. Um, is it something that uh, I recommend? Uh, yeah. Uh, for the price point of just over 300 bucks, you can get into the 3D printing game and start printing stuff for your friends, start printing stuff as gifts, or even if you have a side business, you can start doing that. There's different... Let's talk for a moment about <clears throat> the filaments. So... I ordered a filament printer and a filament basically, filament thinking, you know, whenever you're growing up, if you went fishing, you're thinking monofilament lines. So you had that plastic acetate filament that you would wind onto your fishing line and you would, uh, you know, cast it out and, and wind up and the strength is really high. That's similar to what's going on here. The filament comes in a roll. Here, I'll grab the roll. Currently, I have the test roll that's on there and there's different types of plastics that you can order. ABS plastic is a little more flexible, whereas PLU plastic, um, I believe, uh, let's see here, PLU. PLU plastic is a little bit more brittle, but it's lightweight, and I think the melting temperature is a little bit lower, whereas the, um, the ABS is a little bit higher. And there's something called a resin printer. And I didn't want to order the resin printer because I wanted this inside. I, I have a basement, but it's not really inhabitable. Um, you know, the resin printers are messy. Um, you know, they basically have a tank where you pour resin in there, resin uh, being like fiberglass, think fiberglass resin. And it uses a, uh, a laser to etch out, uh, you know, the, the, the intersection of lasers to etch out the uh, print. Now with that, you get a microscopic detail that I don't think, you know, the filament printers can, uh, can do. But that being said, 
you know, the filament printers are again, really good. So the filament goes into a print head and that filament, I'll show it to you. Here's the roll right here. And you can see inside, I haven't opened it up yet. Here, let's open it up really quick. Hopefully I won't slice my hand off with my gigantic pocket knife. <gasps> just kidding, I'm just kidding. I cut myself. Not that I haven't cut myself in the past, I have. I have lots of scars to prove it. Okay, so I ordered as an additional roll for the printer, I ordered an additional roll of um, uh, PLA, not PLU, I'm an idiot, PLA. So again, I ordered black because it came with white. And as you see, this is a huge roll, so I'm gonna be printing PLA for a while. Uh, they also offer, like I said, ABS, which I'll probably order some ABS filament as well because I wanna make a cell phone case um, and maybe sculpt some really cool uh, creatures on the back of the cell phone case, um, which I think would be really cool, <clears throat> and then print that out. Um, I know that there's different print services online that you can go to. Uh, Creality 3D actually offers, I believe, a print service um, maybe for different materials and you can get stuff printed in metal. Um, so there's 3D printing is kind of the wave of the future. <clears throat> you know, you look at this device and you, and you think, man, it's very industrial looking. And I think that's great. I think that, you know, that do it yourself, that maker quality to it really adds to the um, sort of that je ne sais quoi, <laughs> that, that feeling of I, I've got an industrial product, you know, it's very well made and it's going to last for a very long time. Um, so let's go ahead and turn you around. I'll let you see the print, uh, the printer in action. Okay, so here we are in action. As you see, it's printing something called a raft. A raft is basically, it extends outward from the print. And it, this is a heated surface right here. You can see it's like no touchy. And that's magnetic too, so whenever you're ready, you just take this right here and you peel it up. See that? You peel it up and then you can just bend that and it pops your print off. Um, and of course they included as well a putty knife in case you need to scrape that uh, clean. You never want to press anything on top of the actual glass surface underneath that magnetic top. Um, so one of the things that I noticed, and you can see it just a little bit in there, if I can get in there, you see the little strings right there to the right-hand side, the little string of A string of that's a, a technical artistic term that, um, you know, we in the biz use string of Um, no, just kidding. So the little strings that happened are whenever that print head releases, you know, when it goes and it moves somewhere else, that, that filament is still melted and think string cheese, string cheese, and it stretches and you've got that little string that goes. And then whenever the printer goes back to another, or it goes to another spot, it starts extruding. And then you have that string that comes out and it dries. That's something that you're going to have to clean off your model. It's not horrible. It's not bad, but it is one of those, it's not even unexpected, you know, all you got to do is watch a few, a few videos here and there. You have to clean your model. I recommend a, um, a brass, a soft brass brush, and they sell those on Amazon, and they probably sell them on uh, creality.com uh, as well. Um, you know, and you can just brush off some of those hairs, and you can also use uh, a pocket knife to carve those off. And we're gonna do that here in a moment after the print gets done. It's gonna take about two hours, but it'll be instantaneous for you guys. So, and of course you have your handy dandy X-Acto knife and you just go in and you clean it up. That is part and partial to the process. This is not new technology. 3D printing's probably been around for a long time. I don't know the exact dates. I would surmise uh, in its current iteration, probably 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, maybe it's been around. But nowadays the printers are much better. They're more reliable. Um, so take that plunge. I, I think that for those of you who are interested in getting in the 3D game and just were like, I can't do it. You know, the programs are easy to use. The learning curve is much lower. The language 
And then the printers are, you can get a really decent one for under 500 bucks. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say about it. You know, the, the Creal, Creality, that's always a fun word to say. The Creality Ender 5, uh, so far, um, I'm only on my second print, um, but so far, initial, and I, like I said, I didn't even print the initial 16 hour print. It was 16 hours I let this thing roll. Not a hiccup in the world, no binding, nothing, no hiccups at all. And that's, that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and turn you around and we're gonna look at the finished print and we're gonna kind of see exactly where we landed. And we're gonna talk a little bit um, in the very end about uh, you know the direction that the channel's gonna go and you know how I'm gonna integrate some of these 3D sculpting projects in and how I want to kind of expand not only from 2D art uh, to digital art, which we already do, 2D art, which we already do, uh, going into 3D sculpting, which we do a little bit here and there. And then, you know, utilizing on different devices from PCs to iPad. Can you sculpt on an iPad and export to uh, a file that this particular printer can use? So we're going to explore that and we're going to just kind of delve deep into uh, something a little bit different. We're always going to keep our core, which is drawing. You know, drawing is going to be the focus of the channel always. But as you'll see, you know, that creative process that we utilize from drawing to graphic design to 3D sculpting to character design to creature design to vehicle design, you know, all of this language that, um, you know, I've learned over my uh, years and years of, of being in the business, you know, the business wants to put you in a box and I'm kind of a generalist. I love doing everything. I love 3D sculpting. I love 2D art, I love teaching. I, lo I mean, literally this art world that I've just barely put my stick into um, is, is a great big revolution of creativity that's happening. And, you know, even in amongst all the political garbage, even amongst all the disease garbage, even amongst all of it, there's still a lot of beautiful creativity going on in the world. So let's turn you around and look at that skull. Okay, so here's the model that I used um, for the print today. So we'll just do a little bit of roundabout. You, saw, you see that I did have some punch outs. The teeth look pretty difficult. Um, but let's go ahead and go over to the print. And here it is. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now you're not going to see a lot of the texture that's there because I didn't have the detail. And plus the sizing, I didn't make it too large. But I am getting some of the banding around the eyes, some of the texturing around the eyes. That's the little place right there that it picked up. So overall, I'm really happy in the teeth. It even got separation in between the teeth. Looks like even in the back. You know, some of those areas and some of the places in there. I'm overall, I'm really impressed. You know, and just to see, I am getting a little bit of the striations from, which is indicative of the filament printer. But if you look, it all disappears through here. And like right here, I need to adjust. That's where it was right on the base. I need to adjust the um, leveling a little bit more, a little bit better uh, on the deck. So overall, I think it really turned out well, um, you know, considering I still haven't gotten everything perfectly dialed in. And that skull print was on the, uh, the normal setting. I didn't put it on the highest. I didn't put it on, you know, the most micronic um, detail setting. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm hyper impressed, you know. I had printed out another piece, um, two years ago, uh, 2019, on a $2,500 printer that I had set to the highest settings, and it was also a filament printer, and honestly, it wasn't even close to that. So, and then I had ordered something from a uh, print shop that prints it uh, three-dimensionally, um, you know, online, and I got it back, and again, it, it wasn't at the same quality. So, overall, my final word on the Creality Ender 5. So, Easy to put together, relatively speaking. 
The documentation, again, easy to follow. Um, little nuances like the leveling you have to get correct just to make sure. Again, it gives you pretty much easy instructions whenever it comes to leveling. The only hang up I had was whenever I used the SD card that they provided in the kit with all of the information. It had the, the slicer on it. It had a bunch of warranty information. It had some uh, some test prints. Um, and honestly, uh, I'm sure that I could obtain that information if I contacted them. But I had to reformat the SD card. And that could have been a myriad of different things. It might not have been seated correctly whenever I put it in the computer. I mean, who knows? You know, but I went ahead and reformatted it. And I was able to get the models on there. And it works just fine now. Um, so that being said, uh, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Again, the Ender 5 from Creality. Uh, you can go on the Creality website or you can order it from Amazon. No affiliation. I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that. Um, but overall, great printer. We're going to be doing a lot with this particular device. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll include it as part of the process of 3D sculpting. And, uh, you know, then we'll do a printout. And then maybe, I mean, who knows? I might even get into mold making. So that might be pretty cool. Um, but overall, very excited, very excited in the direction the channel's taking from two-dimensional art to traditional art to sculpting to 3D sculpting to 3D printing, mold making, and eventually, you know, um, one of my dreams uh, as an illustrator is to have uh, a small toy company, you know, manufacturing toys, creating toys, something educational, something cool, something collectible, we don't know. But either way, thank you guys for watching the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see and definitely share um, this video. We definitely want to grow the channel as much as possible. Get the word out and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay.